one. It became possible for people to envisage industries, not companies, industries, initiating standards organizations. You don't have to wait for somebody with the invention to be willing to do it. <laughs> Number two. We learned that you could test your assumptions both in the real world and on paper and that it was absolutely vital to do so. And three, we learned how to involve the industries that we were working with in what we did in order to sell it. And four, we learned how to interface with government. Mm -hmm. And lastly, in a number of cases, we began to size out the issue, when people began to size out the issue of patent and licensing rights. Mm -hmm. And if the work was done properly and the market was properly defined, and the numbers were put to the market, it became clear that the size of the market was vastly more important than the patent ownership and the license income. And that allowed people to work together. So the expansion, what we did as an industry, in looking at the total market from beginning to end and its opportunities, and proving them realistically, opened up a world of standardization that was a hell of a lot easier. Okay. That, now, on the other issue, ID, identification, was always there. But nobody ever thought of it as something that would go, that was universal, that had a universal application. Yes, we were being forced to it by the fact that you had to put numbers on items so that you could put them in a computer. But what could you do with it if you had the number? And where did you go? How can an item be a number? People began to understand that an item and the number were the same thing. And once it was a number and not a picture of a can, there was an infinite number of things you could do with it. There was an identity. So the establishment of the identity as the core building block of any information system, I believe, was first publicized and first brought to the public and to industry by our committee. Telephones had numbers, but they were American telephones number, this guy's number, and that guy's number. Um, there were parts all over the place in plumbing houses. Uh, plumbing supply houses, everything had numbers, but they were 95, they were crazy numbers and, and there was no relationship between them. And what we did was we said, no, there's a world out there. There are that many grains of sand and if we wish, we can put a number or an identity to everything that's out there. We now, that's not original thinking now, that was back then. It truly was. Um, and you didn't have to put a committee together to decide which was the most attractive number. Who cared what the number was as long as you know that nobody else could use that number for anything else. It belonged to that item. So you had to set up the structure to protect the item. And the need to set up that structure could also be the need to organize your system group and once you've organized your systems group, you have opened up the world of improving it, improving, improving, improving the systems. So I believe that that's the true benefit of where we are. I don't want to narrow it down to we were able to get good returns, 40% returns of the checkout, or that it went into health and beauty aids, or that it 
we were able to do meat and everything like that. No, we were able to call a piece of meat a name that was the same no matter where it was. So you started with the control of the number system for one purpose only, and that is to avoid duplication, to assign ownership. And you went from there to whatever organizations were out there that you wanted to put together right. to represent you as an industry right. to what you were doing.